Hello and welcome to the ninth OpenGL screencast. Today we'll be getting into rotation, scaling, and transformations. We're going to skip, o skip over quadrics because it's time to get onto something a little more fun. So here we go. We are going to get right into it. We are taking our cube from episode 7. Everything else is the same. And we'll jump right in and we'll just take a look at these three um, different functions, GL translated, GL rotated, and GL scaled. And the D, D on each of these can be replaced with an F, just depending on if you want a float or a um, double. So let's get right into it. So let's talk about translations first here. Um, it takes in three parameters, the X, Y, and Z, and how much it is translated. So let's just take a look at how this uh, works. So here we go. The first one is just moves it over by half. So if we replace that x, we're going the x in the positive direction versus the negative. So looking at the code there, we just move over the x direction half positive. If we replace that with negative, then we are going the other way, half direction. So that's that. Y is very similar, and I bet you can guess. It goes in the y direction. So we're slightly above the uh, origin by a half point. And finally, Z is right in front of the origin, so going in the positive direction in the Z value. So that is a GL translated. Rotation is similar, but it takes in degrees and then the XYZ. So we're going to rotate 45 degrees around the X axis here. So let's make that. And as you can see, we rotated our yellow front facing down uh, counterclockwise 45 degrees. So pretty simple there. Y, we rotate counterclockwise 45 degrees. So, and the Z is we just rotate 45 degrees around the Z axis. So very, very simple stuff there. Finally, scaled takes in three parameters, x, y, and z. Um, you want all of these to be ones in, as opposed to zeros like the other two because it keeps the scale of that original object to 100% uh, of what it originally is. So this is going to be 200% of the original size, 100%, 100%, or right, x. So as you can see, we are twice as fat in the x direction. And let's go ahead and take a look at these other two. And they do exactly what you would expect. Y. And finally, the Z. So those are the three functions that you'll be using a lot in OpenGL to actually make complex objects um, that haven't been designed in like Maya or one of those other programs. So an important thing to take away from this is that order matters. And generally, generally you want to do uh, your translations, rotations, and scales in that order because the way OpenGL reads them is backwards. So it'll scale, rotate, and then translate. So here's a couple of examples here where we're doing a scaling on the Z, we're rotating, and then we're translating it over one space. So if you look at that here, Basically, we are scaling the Z, which is this direction. Then we rotate the entire object counterclockwise, 45 degrees this way. And then we move it over. So it ends up being exactly what we'd want it to be. Now, if we go ahead and do this other one here, you're going to kind of not understand why it's doing what it is. So in this case, we're going to translate over, then rotate it, and then scale it. So first, see as you can see, it ends up mixing it really weird. So we translate it over, then rotate it. So we are rotating our diamond, or our, excuse me, our square to be like a diamond shape, and then we translate it this way uh, on the Z. So it ends up being entirely different than what you would expect. So in general, um, order matters, and it's read from the bottom up. And you generally want to scale, rotate, then translate in order to get the uh, effect that you want. And coming down, we can also do multiple things at the same time. So we can do translate 1 and 1 on the uh, X and Z here, for example. 
and we go see one over and one up on the X and Z pretty much exactly what you'd expect uh, if we had a rotation before that um, we rotate it and then we move it over one and uh, forward one so kind of exactly what you'd expect in this scenario um, let me move this to the other side and not exactly what you would think it would be um, and the reason for that is like we said the order matters so we're translating it first and then we're gonna rotate it um, around that axis and so you really just gotta pay attention to what you're doing here as that's a very uh, important thing to know so here's another example um, of com compound uh, settings so we got gel rotated 45 around the X and the Z you would think it would be like a nice little triangle looking ish but it's not in fact it's a little off kilter here and um, in general you don't want to do compound uh, in general you don't want to do compound things so even though you can it's better to do two different things here so we're going to rotate first around the Z and then around the X um, in this example and see that's exactly what you'd think you'd want you'd want it uh, a little more like that so um, just because you can do things doesn't mean you necessarily should uh, finally scaling is actually generally okay however it, it ends up being um, different if you end up doing it with multiple other of, of these at the same time but in general scaling is a little better than the others so in this example we are scaling it uh, three times as high, twice as wide, and half as, as, uh, half as deep. So that's what that is. Um, that's it for, for these three extremely useful functions. Next time we'll build a, a complex um, object with all of these translations and we will go ahead and build that and I will show you uh, a little bit of uh, how the, you can push and pull matrices in order to build objects uh, that are very, very unique and pretty fun. So, hope this was helpful to you guys, and I'll see you guys next time.